All right, third time's a charm because I hate myself and uh, I'm a perfectionist. So this is like the third time I've recorded this. Uh, but anyways, thanks for hanging out here. Uh, this is going to just be covering the process of adding a uh, MPC attack effect uh, or bullet effect to your animations in Animation Studio. Um, I talked about making this video a little while ago and then I, I sat on it for a couple days now, so I'm getting around to it right now. All right, so we're popping in here to the uh, param editor inside of Map Studio. There's a couple of uh, params as a whole that we're gonna be messing with here, like um, attack param for both player character and NPC, and then behavior param for the player character, and then the uh, bullet params as well. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just make a couple extra rows down here at the bottom of the behavior param for the player character. Um, if you watched any other videos, uh, it just, you know, I showed me copying an existing row and then just renaming it like nine Brogillion and then pasting it down here. That's, that's basically all it was. Um, so that way we can reference this in uh, Animation Studio instead of an existing one because obviously you don't want to reference just an existing one because you're making your own. That's the whole reason you're here. Um, so once you've made one of these rows, like 9 Brazilian and 2, 9 Brazilian and 3, whatever, um, just make sure you set up the variation ID over here and the behavior judge ID. Um, the variation ID is just going to be whatever the, um, like, effectively the middle four uh, characters are in the ID, so this is all zeros, and since it's all zeros, this is just a regular zero, and then the behavior judge ID is the last three digits, but since it's 002, it's just two. Uh, inside of Animation Studio, it will ask you to punch in a behavior judge ID, um, and inside of that, it is actually the first digit of your row here, and then the last three, so it would be 9002 we did discuss this in a previous video in more depth so um, that's pretty much the most that i'm going to touch on that specifically in here um, you've got behavior category for you know setting the behavior of it and then you set it to player because obviously we're trying to get this to work with a player um, and then if it is a attack param like something like one of like Malakath's for instance like black blade slash that goes like all over the place you know um, you would want to set it to reference an attack um, instead of a bullet and if it's referencing a bullet you just set it to uh, bullet obviously and then you can play with the stamina consumption and all this other stuff if you really want to I'm just gonna leave it alone though um, with that being said, what the uh, what the goal here is is we're we're trying to create a uh, new bullet for us to reference uh, using the NPC's uh, attack and bullet information. So for this, we're going to be doing uh, Astle's laser, so we can shoot that out at people. Um, right here, I already ran through doing it really quick just to make sure that I knew what I was doing before I made a video on it, so you know I could show it actually working and all that. Um, but we're gonna do it with nine Brazilian and two here so that you can kind of see the whole process play out. Um, the first place that we're gonna go here is we're gonna just have another window open um, inside of the attack param NPC panel or param here for it. Um, this right here is the laser um, for Astel. Like this is the, this is the behavior or uh, this is the attack param that Astle's bullet references uh, when it's called upon. So um, what we're going to do, quite simply, is we're going to copy it. So uh, just pop this open here in one window and then open up the attack param player character in another one here and then make a new row and then just name it like Astle's laser PC, PC for player character, just so you know. Um, and then just copy that information over. So, I mean, you just go into the NPC one, you take a gander at what's going on in here with it, and then you just kind of can copy paste or just punch in that same information. Just kind of make sure it's 
the same because you know you want it to be the same as what the boss is doing you know you can make um creative changes with it you know changes knock back distance you can change its um damage um all that kind of stuff if you want to um i'm just copying it over effectively verbatim um for the ability to actually just have it be the same um but once you've done that you can then go over to the bullet param itself here and what we're going to do is we're going to make a brand new bullet param so what i did is i just found the bullet param for assholes laser and i just copied it and then repasted it with a new row id and then instead of having it reference the attack param npc uh, laser for Astol, I just have it referencing the uh, player character laser for Astol that we just made. Um, pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, one thing that you'll want to just keep your eye on is there's going to be a uh, this this specific little box uh, that you're going to want to check if you know the damage isn't being done by this uh, specific attack or uh, effect or bullet or whatever um, but once we have this all situated here uh, you can just copy the row id here for the new player character laser that we have referencing our um, attack param player character bullet that we made that reference that's that's a copy of the npc one you know it, it's 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 layers you know ogres are like onions um and then you can just go back over into the behavior player param um for the player character go to your new row that you made here and then just slap in your new bullet id right here for it to reference if all is well it should just show you that it is referencing the id that you made. Ta-da, there you go. All the work that you have to do on this side of things is now taken care of, so we're just going to save this up really quick, and then I will catch you inside of uh, Animation Studio. All right, so here we are inside of Animation Studio here. Um, I just took the liberty of navigating down to the uh, sheathing animation for the katana, and then the um, R1 attack coming out of the sheath because uh, that's what I want to add the effect to um, and if you've been kind of following along in the videos uh, that's what we've been doing so um, the first thing that we're going to do here is we're just going to come down to the bottom um, ignore this spawn one shot I added this myself because I was messing around with effects and I thought it looked cool so this has no bearing on the uh, projectile or anything like that so I was going to come down to the bottom here hold down shift and then right click to create a new jump table um, and then we're going to come over to the right here after clicking on it and just change that to an invoke bullet behavior um, if you in, er, are invoking an attack behavior like malaketh something or black blades swishy swooshy or something like that um, you would just do attack behavior instead of bullet behavior and then next up uh, we're gonna decide on what dummy poly we want the effect to come from I generally always just go with um, and 100 i like 10 100 uh, i think it looks pretty good for things coming off the end of the sword but sometimes you have to pick different ones just depending on um where it's coming out and timing wise maybe you have to make adjustments but just for the sake of the video we're just going to go ahead and plug in 10 100 here um Next, we're just gonna also put in the behavior judge ID. Uh, if you were listening earlier, this is just going to be 9002 because first digit of the row ID for behavior param uh, row and then the last three of it as well. Uh, and then we'll just go ahead and click enable right here. And then that should for better or for worse be pretty much everything that you're gonna have to do over here uh, for now, you can kind of decide where in the animation you want the laser to uh, pop out at. I'm going to say it would be cool for it to pop out like maybe here or so. So I'm just going to drag this 
uh, and have it kind of line up with that. Um, I'm just going to save really quick, like, uh, you know, a little error because I don't have the game running in the background. Um, and then I'm going to punch open the game really quick and then I will talk to you again in a sec. All right. So here we are in game just hanging out. Um, so we'll just do the sheath, you know, see the cool like little boom boom and then the little purple lightning and flame on my feet. Those are the, the effects that I told you to ignore because they don't actually have any bearing on the, the bullet or anything. So we're going to give it a shot really quick. And we're just going to absolutely body these little nasty looking things. Uh, since it is tied to the like weapon art itself, it's eating up uh, the you know, FP and all that, but it, it's whatever. Uh, but the important thing is, is that it's working. That's what we like to see. We like to see that. Um, you could see, you know, the uh, bullet itself or the laser maybe wasn't coming off exactly where you would have envisioned or wanted it to be. It's not perfect. So uh, the easiest thing to do is you can just adjust here on the um, animation table here. You can just say, ah, I don't like where it kind of popped out in the animation and I want it later, so make it pop out later, or I want it earlier, make it come out earlier. Um, if it's just like, ah, I actually don't like the dummy poly it's coming out of, just go ahead and find a different dummy poly to have it come out of. Yeah. Um, if you don't have the dummy polys uh, open, by the way, and visible, you can do that by going to Window, Scene Explorer, under the helpers, you can enable the dummy polys and the dummy poly IDs right here. So, um, yeah, I think that that should pretty much cover that for you. Uh, hopefully it was helpful, and uh, if you need help, you can jump in my Discord server, ask for help, or uh, you can... Kind of beat your head against the wall if you want to, to try and figure it out. But uh, if you need it, come get it. Uh, with that all said and out of the way, I hope you guys have a wonderful day slash evening, night, whatever time it is for you. It's late for me. So take care, guys.